So we are going to go a little more in depth today on finding area of rectangles and we're going to start doing a little bit more complicated rectangles. You guys already know how to find the area of a rectangle. We know that that formula is length times width. Now you could also say this um, a different way. It means the same thing, but you could also say that you're doing base times height. Either way you say it, you're still going to find the area of a rectangle either by doing length times width or by doing the base times the height. So let's do just a really simple example, just a regular rectangle, and we're going to find the area. So we're going to say that this is 12 inches, and this will be our base or our length. And then over here for our height or our width, we're going to have, um, we'll say a 6 inches. Oops, I almost wrote centimeters. Okay, so we know that to find the area of the rectangle, all we're going to do is multiply those together. So I could do 6 inches times 12 inches, and I know already that 6 times 12 is 72. And then my unit is going to be square inches, or inches squared, because that's how we measure area. It's measured in square units. This was a very simple example, a very simple rectangle. So what we're going to look at today is how to find the area of some more complicated rectangle. Okay, take a look at this shape. This is obviously not a regular rectangle. This is what we would call an irregular rectangle. Um, you can see that it's kind of missing a piece over here. Um, it, it's not the same as, as a four-sided shape, our rectangles or our squares. But we do need to know how to find the area of these kinds of shapes because we're not always going to have rectangles or squares. Sometimes we'll have shapes like this. And there's three steps to finding the area of a shape like this. And the first one is to split the shape into rectangles. We might not have had one to begin with, but we do want to find some regular rectangles or squares. So look here, I went ahead and inserted this line so that now I have one rectangle up here and then I have, I, I'm not sure yet whether this is a rectangle or a square down here. So step one is to draw that line. Now, if you'll notice, I could have drawn another line. I could have probably taken my line this way if I wanted. And look, notice here I again have two different rectangles. Um, it doesn't matter which way you draw your line as long as you draw it so that you have two rectangles or squares. Now I'm going to go back to my first line, and then we're going to look at step two. Step two is to find the area of each rectangle. Now, let's take a look. We've got my line, and look at this top rectangle that we see. Well, we already know that the formula to find area is to do length times width, or we could call it base times height. So in this top rectangle, what do I have as my base? Well, my base would be this right here, or this line right here, and I could tell that that's 9 feet, because if this top one is 9 feet, whoopsies, well, if this line is 9 feet, then this line is going to be 9 feet. My height, or my width, is 4 feet. I can do 9 times 4 is 36, and I know that I'm going to measure that in square feet. So the area of this top rectangle is 36 square feet. Now let's look at the bottom. The bottom one is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, I see that this is 6 feet. So if this line is 6 feet, well, I know that this line has to be 6 feet. I don't know the length of this side. And this is telling me 10 feet. However, that 10 feet isn't just for this red part down. This 10 feet is for the entire line. Well, I don't have the entire line in this square or this rectangle. I only have part of it. So how can I figure out what just this part of the line is? Well, look at this. I know that over here I had 4 feet. If this is 4 feet, on this rectangle, this part right here is going to be 4 feet. Okay, I know if this is 4 feet and the whole line is 10 feet, I need to figure out what this part is. Well, I can do 10 minus 4. 
10 minus 4 is 6, so this part of the line is going to end up being 6 feet. I could put these two parts together, 4 feet and 6 feet, and get 10 feet. If this part is 6, this part is 6. Now I can use the formula to find the area of that bottom rectangle. I'm going to do my length times width, or my base times height, and do 6 feet times 6 feet is going to give me 36, and we measure this in square feet. So now I've, I've done step one. I've split the, the shape into two different rectangles. Step two was to find the area of each rectangle. Step three is now to add the two areas together. So I went ahead and did that over here. Um, I added my 36, I should have put square feet with my other 36 square feet and I got 72 square feet. This says feet squared, square feet, feet squared, it's going to mean the same thing. Um, and those are the three steps to really solving the area of irregular rectangles. Okay, let's look at another example. Um, I have this shape right here and I put my three steps over on the side just as a reminder to us so that we can see them. So the first thing we need to do is to split these shapes and there's two different ways I see that I could split. I see one that I could do right here, which will give me one rectangle at the top and another at the bottom. And I also see a way that I could split right here and have a big one to the right and a smaller one to the left. Remember, it doesn't matter which way you split the rectangles as long as they become split. So I'm going to go ahead and split my rectangles this way so that I have a top rectangle and a bottom rectangle. And so I've done step one, I went ahead and split. Now step two is telling me that I need to find the area. So let's look first at this bottom rectangle. Well, I have my length or my base that's telling me it's seven. I'm not using this three because the three is only telling me from this point to this point. It's not counting the line that I added. The three is only measuring the line that was already there. So I'm going to use the seven because that tells me the entire length of the rectangle. Now my height or my width in this rectangle is two. I'm going to multiply those together. Seven times two is 14. And I'm going to get inches square or square inches. Now I also need to find the area of my top rectangle. Now this one is going to be a little bit more difficult. I know that this height or this width is 9 and if this side is 9 I know this side is 9 but I need to know the length of this line or the length of this top line. Well how can I figure that out? I'm going to have to look to my bottom rectangle to help me. Okay, I know that the very bottom of this entire shape is 7 inches. And I know that this little part is 3 inches. What I need to know is this red part. Well, if I know the whole thing is 7, and this part is 3, and I need to figure out this part, I'm going to take the whole thing minus the part I know and get the part that I don't know. Well, I'm going to do 7 minus 3. 7 minus 3 is 4. And then I can double check and make sure that what I did was correct. If this whole bottom line is 7, well this whole line is equal to it. 3 plus 4 is 7. If this bottom is 4, I know that this top is going to be 4 inches. And now I can go ahead and find the area of this rectangle. I'm going to do 9 times 4 is 36. And we know that we're measuring this in square inches or inches squared. And then the very last step to finding the area of this entire shape is to add the areas together. Well, 36 and 14 I can add. 4 and 6 is 10. Carry my 1. 3 and 1 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. I know that the area of this shape is 50 square inches. Okay, so we're going to look at one more kind of shape. Now this... <laughs> is obviously not even an irregular rectangle. We know that the first step for irregular rectangles is to split up that shape into rectangles. Well, there's really 
no way that I could split up this shape in order for me to get rectangles. So what do we do if we have a shape like this and we need to figure out its area? Well, this is very simple. Um, what I like to do is to maybe get like a pen or a pencil or even like a crayon that would, um, something like that would work. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna count how many whole squares that I see. So I'm just, I usually start at the bottom or the top or the right or the left and I just work my way across. So I'll go ahead and start at the bottom on this shape and I see that's one hole, two holes. Mm, if it's just a little like this, I think I would go ahead and count that as a hole. Three, no, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm, that one I don't think I'm gonna count as a hole. No, no, no. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm not gonna count that, not gonna count that. 19, I'll count this one. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I'm not gonna count that one. 29, 30, 31. And now I have a couple of, of squares that I haven't quite marked off yet. I'm at 31 total right now. Oopsies. So right now I have 31 squares, but I know that I'm probably gonna end up with a few more. I'm gonna see which ones I can maybe try to combine as whole squares. So if I look, at this one right here and this one over here, I might be able to say that's a whole square. So I'm gonna say 32. I think I'm gonna add these and get 33. This one and this one could make 34. This one and this one could probably make 35. This one and this one could make 36. And maybe then I could add these last two to get 37. Now there's not an exact science to figuring out the area of shapes like this. This is probably gonna be your best method though to use some kind of pen or something and just kind of cross off squares as you go. And to keep a count, always do the whole squares first, figuring out how many holes there are. And then at the end, you wanna kind of go back and maybe try to put pieces together. Um, now, if you would have said there were 36 whole square, 30, the area was 36 or the area was 38, you would have been correct because there's probably not exactly 37. You just wanna make the best estimate that you can on a shape like this and the strategy that I just showed you is gonna be the best one to get that estimate. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about how to find the area of irregular rectangles and some strange shapes today and I will see you in class tomorrow.